Welcome back to today's episode of Cigar Sundays. It's been a while. I've been lazy with the Cigar Sundays. My apologies. We're going to be doing this a lot more often. And I have a lot of interesting people to speak to. And one of those is my good friend here, Will Courtney. Afternoon, evening, good night. Well, let's start with how we met, because I find that to be very interesting. I've sort of attributed to you the CEO of networking moniker, because <laughs> uh, you arrived on this island, uh, Koh Samui, small, very small island in Thailand, off a golf Thailand. And within two weeks, you seemed to know everyone. I've been here for like a year. Yeah. And I'm looking at your stories as like, oh, he's met him, him, him. Fuck me. You have like sped run meeting the entire island. What, what? Tell me the story behind that, bro. So essentially, when I moved out here, I was obviously investing a lot of money in the, you know, my time, my time, my self development and all sorts of knowledge acquisition. So what I did, I invested 6,000 USD on like a networking course. Mm. Learn how to network properly. I got from. Uh, thank you. And put everything that I learned into place. You know, you get, you get this knowledge, you may as well use it and reach out to people on Instagram, join loads of like networking groups, like entrepreneurs, digital nomads in Costa Mary, ah. and linked up with all those guys. Typically what I did was, like I went out for dinner with all of them. Yeah, no, that's what we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out for dinner, yeah. I paid for most guys' dinners. Nice. Um, not yours, because there was like six of it. Um, and yeah, that, that's just like a small act of, you know, kindness, generosity. Which... Is it all you can eat Greek? Yeah, that was nice. That was really, really nice, actually. <laughs> Bad in pain for all of us. A ball you can eat great. Yeah. Time six, bro. Could be New Zealand fillet steaks, though, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, that could have been worse. Japanese wagyu steaks. <laughs> but yeah, I literally met everyone on the island within a month. I think I met 40 entrepreneurs in, like, the first six weeks I was here. Yeah. It's crazy. Because this island is, is incredible for networking. It's so small. And, like, the barrier of entry to meet people is so low. Like, when you send me a message, if I remember correctly, a message or something like, Hey man, I'm in Koh Samui. I see that you like fighting and also you do business. That's two things we have in common. We should meet up. And you know, I get I get messages like that and I go on your profile, I'm like, yeah, okay. This guy's in fighting fit shape, which is always respectable. One of the first things you can respect as a man is physicality. Well, thank and you. then and then the obviously you're doing entrepreneurship stuff. I'm like yeah, dude. Yeah. The more people I meet like that, the merrier. Because we like... learn so much from each other. And the barrier of entry to meeting people is so low here. It's like, you just drove 10 minutes to my house. Literally 10 minutes. Yeah. 11 minutes on Google Maps. Yeah. Plus or minus two minutes. So the barrier of entries are so low. So you may as well meet a ton of people. It's an incredible place to network. So what sort of things have you learned in your, how long have you been in Thailand? Four months. Four months. So you've been here for four months. What sort of things have you learned? What are the biggest learning lessons you think? Being here, oh, the fog's going crazy. Bugs or dragon. I think they like the light. And yeah, they're most smeared of <laughs> It's just like, they're really <laughs> nervously on a podcast and I'm like, yeah. Anyway, you've met a lot of cool people. Loads of cool people, mate. What are some of the biggest learning lessons you think? And that's like a bit of a loaded question. Yeah. So one of the main things is, you know, they take risks, the small town syndrome. That small town mindset, which I've actually created a YouTube video on. And what I learned is if you leave and spend six months in another country, you leave, spend one year in another country, no matter how long for or what you're doing out there, you may just be traveling. You're going to come home a better person. You're going to come home much more experienced. You would have had like amazing things to like, talk about, literally stories to tell your grandkids. And the only thing that hasn't changed is your hometown. Mm. So regardless of what you do, no matter if you become successful or not, if you don't make money, that's fine. You go home, start again. But you have changed and grew as a person. And I think that's one of the most important lessons. And I can see myself as a person, as my character is, is growing like every single day. Second thing is probably when it rains, it pours. When it rains, it pours. I like that one. So what, what okay, so what, how did you learn that lesson then? So one of my friends, he's, he's in crypto at the minute. Mm. He's looking to be a millionaire this summer. That's his, oh, well. that, that's his goal, <laughs> yeah. Insane, insane. But that's, that's the level we'll hold ourselves to, isn't it? Yeah. And that's the level the guys out here, the level the guys we have access to. Yeah. And what I learned from him is, you know, I came out of Thailand, I quit my very corporate, you know, with good aspirations, my job, quit that, I had two businesses on the side, quit all of them to look, start something new, enter the online space and, and really make a name for myself out here. And that's exactly what I did. First few months were rough in terms of business. You know, I wasn't making all, like loads of money like I was back home. Mm. I was thinking, fuck, I've made a mistake. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm less my security. And, oh. but when it rains, it pours. What he meant by that is, when you start making money, you make a lot of money, and that's that's true. When I what, what are what are you what are you doing out here for business? Sir? So high ticket sales, mm -hmm. so closing, appointment setting, and then I've just started up new offer as well, high performance coaching. You know, I'm 21 with a Rolex and a six pack. I live in Thailand. Fuck yeah, 
I want to. You had a Rolex. Yeah. Do you? Are you wearing it right now? <laughs> now, Jesus Christ! I want to. I want to. So bad at noticing like so, small details like that. When I'm with one of my friends, uh, he's like very on the board this time. Just see someone like half a mile away, like that's a Rolex, and I'm like, how the? F-? Yeah. Like you're standing right there, and I didn't even realize you have a Rolex. Some people are mad. That's Mate, awesome. To be fair, did you notice that? I'm missing a button on my buzz. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I didn't know. Now I can't bloody up and see it. <laughs> <laughs> man, like I feel like if I can help other people like achieve the things I've achieved, you know, or bits, it's not massive. I'm not a millionaire yet, but I feel like it is the help that a lot of young young entrepreneurs needs. You know, I've learned things my own way, and I just want to regurgitate the lessons and knowledge I've acquired for like the past four years in my self development journey. Really, yeah. So your your offer is high performance coaching for young entrepreneurs. See. Yeah. So what what does that look like? What's the A to B? So the A to B of that is when they join, they get four coaching calls. Mm-hmm. In that, I cover how to book qualified leads. So obviously, I made I was quite successful with my appointment set, and this can go for guys in the appointment setting industry, and also for the guys who have their own offer. I kind of want to set more appointments, set more qualified leads for for their own business. Yeah. Um. Then the second one is networking. I paid six dollars in USD for a networking course. I met the likes of you. I've met loads of great guys out here. So the proof of concepts there. So I'm just putting that in action and basically teaching people how to do that, how to leverage communities, mm. how to optimize discovery calls. So without giving too much away, what does what's your networking protocol look like? Online or in person? I'd say I'd say online. Online's probably gonna be most applicable to the guys watching this. They wanna start getting involved in types of people which are gonna elevate them forward in life rather than the dummies they play rock league with or they go out to bars and drink pints with they want to fucking hang out with guys that yeah, yeah. Are doing something so and the best way to do that's online it is you're right there's a few ways you can go about it really mm. one way i like to do it is you know they like just reach out to people reach out on instagram just be like hey bro i'm looking to connect with like-minded entrepreneurs say you're absolutely smashing your youtube i say you're absolutely smashing your kickboxing mm. um hope you don't mind the message i don't want to connect and that just engages a conversation doesn't look like you're selling anything mm. just looks like you're there for a conversation and then when you have that conversation they like, try and provide them value try and be an interesting person and if you try to help someone then people are going to want to have a conversation with you people are going to like you if you're helping someone so you think a big component of that is definitely having like some value to to give before you start reach because like any old bozo could like i'm going to message jeff bezos tomorrow like hey man yeah i like what you're doing man i like how you do things let's connect man you know what i mean like I, but you're not going to get a response from jeff bezos so it needs to be someone who you can give some sort of tangible value into so there's definitely levels to it you know? there's definitely levels <laughs> like, a guy with 1000 followers isn't going to outreach to a guy with like 100k on instagram let's face it they're not really going to get a reply having a blue tick on your instagram as social proof that works one does helps a lot yeah having a personal brand like being an interesting person having cool shit on your profile you know, if you've got a picture of like your grand's cats on instagram that's it and people are going to be thinking who the fuck's this guy but if you've got pictures of you doing my tie fights or jumping off cliffs that's what i saw on your profile yeah yeah that's that me and you were like oh man I'll, i do some fighting and i do some business and i get messages like that quite often and then usually when i go on their profile i'm like nah noob yeah. Nope. yeah, I mean, I'm okay, you know, but then I go on your profile, I'm like, yeah, I, I could rock with this guy. The idea is by this, you want to look attractive, not necessarily you want to be a stunning, good-looking lad, but I mean, like, you want to attract people. You don't want to just outreach to them and have a boring conversation. You've got to, like, catch their attention. If you've got cool shit on your profile, if you look like a G, you've got stuff going for you, then people are more likely to want to speak to you. You know? live a fun life, and yeah. people want to be invited into that fun, or they want to be invited into that disciplined life that you're living. Cool people like cool people. Business people like business people. Fighters like fighters. If you've got a page full of that stuff and you're outreaching to them, they're gonna to want to speak to you because you look like you look like a person that they want to talk to as well. Yeah, I feel I feel like that's a crucial step a lot of people sort of miss with, with but networking. They're selfishly thinking like I want, I want, and then they're not really putting themselves into the perspective of this person they're reaching out to and thinking like, Am I painting myself? Maybe you are a cool guy, but like you're not yeah. positioning yourself as a cool guy and that's, that's the thing. Because you need to get that fucking initial response. You could have sent me that message and had like the most lame profile ever. And it'd be grand's cats. Yeah, your grand's <laughs> cats. And I'm like, oh yeah, I could do it without hanging out with this guy, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but but you positioned yourself as someone interesting. You've lived a fucking cool life. You you've been kickboxing for six. Mm. It's all about kickboxing. So we actually earlier we we met with what like ten guys. Yeah, we just beat the shit out of each other for one and a half hours, two hours. Fun. 
and it's it's hard to keep up with you because you're very <laughs> good. You just get me in a corner and just beat the fuck out of me. I'm nice though. I'm nice. Yeah, you are. No, you are. You are. No, you you're you're a good sparring partner. You are. But you could beat the fuck out of me. <laughs> it's nice to know that you know. It's I'm nice to know. Aware of that, like brutally when I'm in the ring with you. But I'm like, okay, he's being nice. He's just he's throwing out. He's like messing around with me basically. But you you also you're a good sparring partner because you give me room to grow. Yeah. So like you allow me to make mistakes and then correct course rather than brutally punishing me every time you, you don't learn anything if you get absolutely battered every single round yeah and you don't and learn. i used to i used to fucking spar with people who would just beat the fuck out of me and it'd be like under this false ruse of masculinity like oh yeah man like just get in there and get the shit kicked out of you and it's like really good it's like i did that enough and it actually discouraged me from training more I would literally avoid going because it would just be like every time I go, yeah. I'm just getting fucking brain damage. I need my brain. I've That's never... my strong point, my brain. Okay. <laughs> no, like, it's like fucking, I can't afford to be, keep getting fucked up like this and I end up not going. Yeah. But then I started to spar with different people and I realized like, wow, I'm just like sparring the wrong people here and I'm sparring people with the wrong mindset. Yeah, there, there, there should be no sparring. eagles. There should be no eagles in the gym. Yeah. But what does your kickboxing journey look like as... You, you've actually been like a champion. Yeah, we've. I did win a title or two last year. Yeah, it was started when I was 15. Pretty cliche story. I was getting bullied in school, like most people. I was a small, skinny kid. I was popular, but they, I was harmless. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that they kind of, that doomed over us and I knew that. And that kind of ate, ate, ate away at me. So I just joined a gym and I absolutely loved it. First session, I was addicted. I just kept training and training and training and I had my first fight when I was 16, 17, loved it. There was a thing called meet days on Wednesdays, it's like heavy, heavy sparring. So every Wednesday we would all get together <laughs> and we'd just get kicked the fuck. But like, I'd be training with professional fighters, like adults, and I was like some 45 kilo 16 year old. And bro, I would go into the change rooms crying, like literally in tears, because I'd get, my nose would be fucked. Everything would be fucked up, bro, I'm telling you, like, we don't do it anymore because like we've realized how bad it is and i used to walk into the change rooms like in tears and these to be like the two other people my age in tears as well already in the change room <laughs> one you're like really yeah, been there yeah <laughs> mckenna wade and levi thompson and now they're both like high 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 level special fighters bet there was a lot of character development i think that though yeah that's, like, that's gonna that's gonna like shame you as a man but that's what the lads called it they called it character building uh, yeah i truly think that's that's trans transferred incredibly parallel across like my business and I just me in general because I know that like if you want to be good at something you've got to endure like hardships like nothing worth having comes easy oh yeah yeah and anyone who anyone who does like business knows it's like it's like this man. yeah and it's so easy to get like dragged into do I push that oh, yeah, of course I'm sure. it's so easy to get dragged into like um the the downward periods and you're thinking like fuck I'm, I'm doing shit wrong it's time to pivot oh someone else is doing that over there shiny object syndrome i should do more of that and i've definitely been a victim of that especially when we're in a personal brand because it's like it's arsenal <laughs> you yeah, know like if you've got you. a business it's like oh you know like you've got a bit of wiggle room there it's like you're still in the high-rise building chilling like you know you made a mistake it's like it's fine but like if you make mistakes with your personal brand you've got people like disliking you now and yeah. it's like difficult as a man I mean, you've just got to remain authentic. Like, if people don't like you for being authentic, then it's okay. You, you don't want to be friends with them anyway. You don't yeah. want them to like you anyway. Yeah. You know, that, that, this is what I try and get across to the little lads in the high performance coaching offer. Like, you have to be authentic, and if people don't like that, then it's fine. Yeah. You've got to have the abundance mindset. You've got to realize that there's thousands of other people who are going to like you for being you. Yeah. So for that small minority that don't, that's all right. Fuck them. What if you're a dickhead? What if you're genuinely a dickhead? Wait. Not you, but like, if you are, if, if you're in a personal brand and you're a dickhead, mm -hmm. would you advise them the same? Yeah. To be fair, there's a lot of dickheads who are very successful. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, you're doing for But a personal brand is being a dickhead and it kind of works. Do you have an example? People like Jake Paul in the past, I think now is doing like a lot better. I've, I've never really watched Jake Paul like that, to be honest, so Fair I can't enough. really comment. Logan Paul is also an, his He's a dickhead still. Is he? Yeah, he's a dickhead. He's like, he's like running crypto scams and shit. He's a dickhead. I heard something about that. I don't really know where that came from. Yeah. You, you fucking scam. He's scams. It's straight up scammer, man. No. Uh, dickheads. Nah. Conor McGregor can be a bit of a dickhead. I like Conor McGregor. I love Conor McGregor. I like Conor McGregor. I fucking love Conor McGregor. Yeah, I suppose you're right, then. Like, if you're a bit... But I don't think Conor McGregor is a dickhead. I think he can be a dickhead under the right circumstances. <laughs> I mean, it's hard when you've got all that all that limelight on you, all that pressure. Yeah. Oh my god. And then he's reached like the pinnacle, and he's like, he's got so much 
that it's like it's hard to keep yourself grounded when you're in that it's that's a very unique position to be in yeah i suppose you're right like i guess most people who are just straight up dickheads who have like a bad heart they have bad intentions for people yeah. they naturally just don't do well anyway in life so if they try to do a personal brand it's like like i don't think people like jake paul who can be dickheads for the sake of their personal brand has necessarily a bad heart i don't know jake paul i don't know him but i don't think he has a bad heart bad intentions no. anything like that i think that's just part of his brand and like is an abrasive polarizing figure and that's different to just being a straight up dickhead i think if you're a straight up dickhead who has bad intentions in your your heart for people you have a bad heart you're probably not going to succeed at much in life at all i think if you've got like if you say stuff like what jake paul says and do things like conor mcgregor says then people are either going to love or hate you i yeah. think that comes with with anyone really yeah but you're right in what you're saying like people who are dickheads people follow them because they're a dickhead and like, they want to yeah. hate on them yeah, I suppose people use that to their advantage to get following to get like that club. Are you, are you much into UFC? Yeah, they, watch UFC. Yeah, they, like someone like Colby Covington. His, oh, he's a dickhead. His, oh, he's, his Maya Brand is being the biggest dickhead on earth. But I fucking love that guy. Wait, yeah, apparently that's just all the show, you know. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's straight up like it's like it's like a wrestling character. It's yeah. actually a really nice guy. A wrestling character. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we should do some wrestling bro on this podcast. Do some wrestling. Table flat. Right, let's shirtless wrestling on the pod <laughs> get oiled off <laughs> yeah. that's how very just like awesome days of us back to networking do you do much of it oh yeah but yeah. like I d it's not something that i'm like conscious of necessarily it's just like i've positioned myself and i put myself in the environment where i'm meeting so many people all the time yeah i'm not like it's not a conscious yeah. thing i make like a new friend who's doing bits weekly every week yeah, yeah I, I feel the same right now I've, I've positioned myself literally like physically this is the best place to be for networking, in my opinion. It is. In my current stage in life. In terms of, like, business and what I've done, the accolades, that as well. Because people are like, oh, it's Sam. He does his own personal brand. He's successful with that. He teaches video editing. That's a good thing to have. All of you guys out here are running personal brands. Yeah, need All of you need video editors. <laughs> and it's like, oh, well, guess what I've got? You know what I mean? I've got fucking loads of those guys. So it's a great position to be in. But also, obviously, my work with Hamza, building his personal brand alongside him. So really impressive thing we fucking did like two million subscribers in two years is, is insane so i get a lot of recognition for that as well so it's like the physical side of things and also like i've done shit you've earned your stripes that's it i'd like to sell my stripes but i still have so much fucking more to do funny you should say that people reach out to me and say will it looks like you're living the dream will you're living my dream life like yes like i am living some people's dream but i'm very much still working towards me oh so, not nice. <laughs> that, that's, nice. That's what I think <laughs> every single time. That's a Sigma male Instagram reel quote. Instagram reel. Wait, this is all this podcast is by we're just we're just farming Instagram reels right now. Yeah, farming with, Instagram reels with one liner. Yeah, no, you, it's it's funny. Like, yeah, it's just not it's not a conscious thing for me now. It just happens. Yeah, we're, it's, such, it's such a beautiful position because like, you're an attractive person. <laughs> no, you, you you've got that personal brand. You've got like you know people people message me saying. Bro, how do you know Hamza's editor? Bro, how do you <laughs> how do you know Harbinator? Bro, no, Harbinator, I'm like, whoa. Wait, Jesus, this guy's a celebrity? Uh, it's like, cause ev everyone here is doing, like, interesting shit as well. It'd be much harder if I was in the UK. Nearly every person I talk to on this island that doing interesting shit. Yeah, pretty much. If I was to start speaking to more people in the UK, it's like, one in a hundred will be interesting. <laughs> if that, that's an if that, yeah, like, yeah, I used to have some, like, very dull conversations in the UK. But, like, now I'm usually the guy listening because the people around me are so fucking interesting. I want to just absorb as much information as possible. Whereas that was flipped in the UK. I found that I was, like, speaking and people found me to be the most interesting person. Even though it's a weird position to be in because, like, I transitioned from being, like, a devastatingly socially anxious person to suddenly just becoming a lot more interesting over a short period of time as simply because I progressively overloaded the amount of sacrifice that I went through and I just became an interesting person that way. Nice. There's, there's a lot of people that can just do the fucking same, just doing that. Just do the same. Simplify thing. Uh, but I literally, like one year, I'm like super anxious, zero hoes, no friends, can't even make eye contact with people in a gym. The next year, I walk into the gym, everyone's fucking looking at me, waving, I've got energy, I'm bringing energy into the gym, I'm talking to people, people find me very interesting, it's so interesting how quickly things can flip. When was the pivotal moment that you found, like what was the catalyst? 
that changed you? Was it like a David Goggins moment where you looked at yourself in the mirror? It was a slow transformation. Like, it's hard to pinpoint one moment. I'd say probably breaking up with my ex. I broke up with my ex. And it was like, off-rick story. It was a stupid, like, internet relationship. Or oh, really? Like, it meant so much to me. Yeah. Because you know, I was a fucking nerd. <laughs> oh, man. She And she got with, like, the friend I wasn't supposed to worry about, like, two weeks later. And it was just like, oh, bro, I was super depressed for, like, nine months. Really? So depressed. Oh, my oh. God, bro. And it was the same time where that was like the click for me. I was like, okay, something needs to change because I keep trying to find my fulfillment inside of other people rather than within myself. That's often the same. That's that, a lot of people find that. Yeah. And a lot of like, a girls get that. It's a dangerous place to be in yeah. because your well being is then placed upon someone else. And people are so fickle, man. People are so fickle. So I was like, I'm never going to let that happen ever again. And then I was just slowly started to make better decisions in my life. I was still a fucking idiot doing the wrong things, but I was doing more of the right things. And eventually you keep doing that. You keep progressively overloading the sacrifice. You eventually have no time to do the wrong things and you've completely transformed your life within like two three years. And I was starting from the very fucking bomb. Like yeah. the very bomb. So like it's crazy how different of a person you can become in such a short amount of time if you just start doing more of the right things, less of the wrong things. I think it very much compounds as well, especially when you like you uh, stack habits. Massive snowball effect. Yeah. It wasn't like one day I walked into the gym and I couldn't like make eyes with people and like the next day I walked in I was like just giga chat like, <laughs> talking to all the girls I know like, no, no it happened over like a six to nine to one year period really slowly but like it's crazy because it happens slowly so you don't feel it it's like when you're going to the gym and you're getting strong and your body's changing it's not like a night and day difference because yeah. it's such a slow gradual thing but when I sit here now and think how different I was like two or three years ago it's insane it is insane fucking nuts like you've got to look back and give yourself the credit but then you've also got to sit there and look like the job's not done last month i hit like a financial milestone and i was on a call with some of the guys in the community and they're like oh well that's absolutely fantastic are you buzzing i was like well, i wouldn't say buzzing i'm happy i'm pleased i'm proud the job's not done i feel know? like it's very imp- like i feel i want to get better at this it's funny you bring that up because i want to get really much better at this but i want to get better at celebrating wins if you're grateful for shit that you have you just get more of it and I'd find that I am not conscious enough of how blessed I am and the wins I get. I don't think about it too much, you know. And I feel like if I just, for example, I make a sale, I go to my girlfriend in there. Baby, we, we made a sale and we just go, yes, good job. That's like, that's, that's just going to bring more sales into my life. I can't explain yeah. why. I don't know why. But it just fucking will. I know it will. Well, you're, you're putting positive energy out there. And like you said before, there's two types of people in the world. There's people who absorb energy. Yeah. And there's people who radiate energy. And you want to be that person that radiates energy. Yeah. I learned this at quite a young age. I was I started working in a very, very busy local Italian restaurant. It was like super modern. It was like the place to be basically. Nice. I was like 15. Started washing the dishes. Then I started being a waiter. 15? Yeah. Wow. And then 16, I started being a waiter. There's a waiter there called Billy, right? I'll tell you about Billy. He is super confident, especially when it comes to girls. Yeah. I used to see him go over and like talk to like women and like make them laugh and make them blush. Nice. And they get kisses from them and stuff on the cheek. And I used to be like, what? Like, how's this guy doing this? What's he got that I don't? And it's charisma. And I started hanging around with him at work and I started picking it up. Yeah. And as I got older, I started wearing like super tight black shirts with tight sleeves. You know, I was, I was going to the gym, I was doing kickboxing. So I was, I was in good shape. I was skinny, but you know, for a 16 year old kid. And then I, I started going over, just talking to tables of girls, you know, like even tables of girls, which were like 25, which I knew I didn't stand a chance. And I knew that knew, I knew that they knew I didn't stand a chance, but I just go over and speak to them and gain in conversation. Cause that boosted me confidence. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh, so are you single? And they'd all be laughing because like there's little kids asking them if they've got a boyfriend. And then they'd be like, yeah, well, I've got a boyfriend. I'll say, well, do you want a better one? <laughs> yeah, really? Good. Yeah, it's funny you say it because you're, you're actually very talented with women as well. And I've noticed that with sales people. Yeah. Those are all fucking Rizzlers. Like, <laughs> you, know, you know, Luke, our friend Luke. Yeah. Luke's like exactly how you just described Billy. That's Luke is my Billy. Like Luke is your Billy. Luke is my Billy. I'm, I'm like, naturally, I'm a bit to myself. You know, I like yeah. being in my own head thinking I'm not like open and luke calls it flying with the world that's a fantastic fucking cause of what flirting with the world flirting with the world flow with the world it doesn't matter who where when it's just open book like he sees a cute dog that's a cute dog most people would think in their head oh that's a cute dog luke's just like that's a cute dog and then if that sparks up a conversation around him great because now he's becoming socially lubricated yes socially lubricated i love that too socially lubricated and then when he does see a hot chick because that's what we all want. You watching this, listening to this, I know what you want. You want to talk to beautiful women. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? 
So if you're socially lubricated, you are ready to speak to the beautiful women. Most guys, they're like, they've got this massive barrier entry. When they see a beautiful woman, they're like, Whoa. and their fucking heart starts going, sweating, their heart pounding out of chest. And that's because they've not warmed up, man. They've not warmed up. They're not lured themselves up. Yeah. If you like speak to that 55 year old man who's walking his dog first and then see if you can do that without having a panic attack. And then think about this beautiful 19-year-old Eastern European woman who you're picturing your life together with and see how it goes then. But until then, bro, you gotta do your, you gotta do your uh, time in the trenches, bro. Speak to the old man instead, man. <laughs> Speak to the 55-year-old EDL supporter, Neil, first. <laughs> yeah. With three bulldogs and a kind of stamina in that. Yeah. Because that's an easy guy to speak to. You spark a conversation with him, no problem. Funny you should say that. I was at a gym with one of the boys before. I'll not mention his name because I don't know if you'd want us to, you know, say it. But what he was telling me, he was, he was saying that he's all right now, but to start with, he was very, he was really struggling to, like, speak to girls. Mm. And, like, cold approach and just, like, hold himself, like, to that higher standard. Like, mm. And I was just, they like, trying to explain to him some of the things that I do that I find it a bit more easy. Mm. I'm not saying I'm, like, a pimp or anything. But <laughs> what I found was... Say there's a, a 10 out of 10 girl in the shop, beautiful, big tits, nice curvy bum, you know, with me. Picture and I. Yeah, you've got any better. Oh, yeah. There she is. <laughs> there she is. We'll go over Rochelle. So you say Rochelle, she's absolutely stunning. Yeah. And then you say, like, ugly Anita. And you're thinking, right, I really, wanna, really, really want to speak to Rochelle, but, like, she's out of my league, you know what I mean? Go up to ugly Anita, ask her if she wants a hand with the shopping, you know, like, just compliment her, be really, really nice. Then do it in a way that beautiful Rochelle. Can hear what you're saying. And then, do you need help with your <laughs> shopping? <laughs> She's always a heavy. <laughs> and then Rochelle automatically thinks, oh, but this guy's confident. He's, he's not just talking to this woman because like, she's beautiful. Yeah, it removes the implications that you're just speaking to her because she's beautiful. Yeah, literally, literally. Which fucking helps a lot because that's why a lot of us are thinking when we talk to a woman. It's like the obvious reason why we're speaking to her is I want to bury my head between your chest. Or... Cut that. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a really good bit of advice it is if you if you allow her to see you just interacting with the world there's not a reason you're necessarily speaking to her then again you've you've got to be confident in yourself and this this becomes this comes with you know having that stack of undeniable proof that you are who you say you are like chris williams says yeah. I, I absolutely love that bro he's, yeah, he's, he's spitting some amazing facts so you need to be confident that you are who you say you are you are a young strapping handsome young man lean mean will court machine twisted steel and sex appeal you know, you've, you've, you've got to be confident in yourself. And then when you go approach that woman, you're confident in yourself that she's, she's going to like you back. Yeah. Because why wouldn't she? With that comes the abundance mentality. Mm. Just like sales, just like networking. You've got to be confident that there's thousands of girls out there that think you're hot, think you're interesting. So she doesn't vibe with you, and it's fine. Yeah, let's go next. Yeah, I mean, when I was single, I struggled quite a lot with, with cold approaches and stuff like that. I'd say anyone listening to this, like, if you're really struggling with this, um, don't worry about it too much. But if you want to get better, Focus on speaking to more people, not necessarily just the people you really want to speak to, which is usually the beautiful women, because barrier of entry there is just so much higher than just speaking to like, like when I was leveling up my social skills, I would speak to anyone. Like I'd go out of my way as soon as I saw an old lady, I'd like yes, three XP, three <laughs> XP. I don't oh, know, wow. yeah, oh, yes. So it's like so easy. She's walking a dog like, oh, what are you? Well, I just have a little chat, and I'm like straight away, I'm on my way to the gym, and I'm like I just spoke to someone. I'm in a good mood now. I, yeah. This is my, like, I'm rolling that snowball now, you know, and then when I get into the gym, someone makes a bit of eye contact with me. Oh, hey, man. Boom. So much easier. Tommy in the gym. Yeah. We, we met this chap just a few days ago, Tommy, which I didn't even know was going to the fight club today, but I met him a few days ago in the gym. We just made a bit of eye contact with each other. So okay. Yeah, he's just like, oh, you're on, mate. I wondered how you used to knew each other, actually. Yeah, literally yeah. just that. That's how I met him as well. Made eye contact at the gym probably like yeah. four days prior to you did. Yeah, like, oh, hey, yeah. Man. Yeah, just start talking and we, we chatted for like 10 minutes. Like, oh, what are you doing? Like, hey, yeah, I'm doing this. Do, 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 do. Oh, come on, yeah. You seem cool. Boom. Friend. Yeah. Simple. Friend. Contact. And that, and that is, that's how easy it becomes once you roll the snowball. But a lot of guys, they get this barrier of like, they, they want the results like this. It's like, actually, you gotta do step one, two, three, four, five. Then you're here. You've got crippling self deprecation self-doubt you know what i mean anxiety that's at the bottom then you've got self-destructive ego like the likes of conor Maria, who or jake ball who could easily like fuck themselves over then in the middle you've got confidence well confidence is an ego earned by basically earning your stripes being the person that you say you are like just being a good person yeah i'm being confident about that but oh. conor mcgregor fits that too though he does fit that that was probably a poor example of my behind yeah. 
but you probably get where I'm going. Yeah. And I think one of the best ways to build confidence to actually engage in conversations is by going to the sauna. Oh, bro. Yeah. yeah. Great tip. Yeah. I had so many interesting conversations in the sauna. I had one guy actually who had like the stretching pad. He's always doing some sort of funky pretzel stretches like that. I don't know what he was doing. Fuck do I not? <laughs> and he just came out like I was speaking to him. I'm gonna start talking about star signs. And I couldn't care less about star signs, bro. I couldn't care less either. They, there's nothing worse when a girl asks for a star sign and they say, oh, I'm a Scorpio. Oh, oh, oh here's well, Scorpios. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, well, I hate star, star scientists. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> in the sauna, you speak to so many people. You speak to, like, I spoke to a guy who lived in Thailand, a guy who lives in the Philippines, a guy who does star signs and all that stuff. Yeah. I spoke to businessmen. Yeah. I spoke to guys, like, on the weight loss journey. Yeah, so, mixed bag. Yeah, man. completely mixed bag. And you got to speak to different people at different levels. And then that helps you in the networking game as well. When you want to speak to those people higher up, yeah, you've already got that confidence and you already know like the topics to talk about. Because star signs. Star signs, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what you should do. If you guys meet um Iman Gadzi, just start talking about star signs, he'll be fucking it fraud. <laughs> star signs, tits. Star signs, tits. <laughs> you 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 wonder why, like why why is the sauna such a great place? And that leads me to like you're sat there, you've got nothing else to do. You don't have your phone. More importantly, you don't have your phone. Yeah. And when I don't have my phone, I have the most engaging conversations the most million dollar ideas yeah it's like when you're in a shower shower thoughts because you don't have your phone that's the only reason shower thoughts exist we're so fucking distracted nowadays that it's, it's, it's like i wonder like if you just went periods of time without your phone you would do so fucking much you would get so many ideas that was like me last week when i brought my phone I didn't have my phone yeah. for 10 days because a car ran over it. I was just driving my scooter. It fell out with me AirPods. I was like, oh shit. Pulled over yeah. the side, got out. The car stopped, walking towards it, and then proceeded to squash my phone. Why? So he waited for you to walk over to see it? Yeah. Wow, that's that's cold. You've seen a few of these, then. I said they were Right, so you went a week without your phone. How was that? It was interesting. Because most people would fall apart. Spent oh. a lot of time thinking, bro, like you said. Like, I've just done a YouTube about like, the power of, you know, being present with your thoughts. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I journaled a lot and I did a lot of meditation and I kind of like fucked it off you know I, I, like I brushed it off my shoulder I didn't think it was really important and then I think about the periods of life when I have meditated journaled written my thoughts down and had time to myself mm. which was at the start of my self development journey when I did a complete social media detox I deleted everything especially when I was in fight camps mm. and that's when I felt my best so I said well why if I want to feel my best then why have I stopped that now so I started doing it again without my phone and a lot of bad habits I had with my phone like not, not necessarily so watching porn or fucking scrolling TikToks but I mean like just being slightly less productive. Like, I've eliminated, eliminated them. So those 10 days without my phone benefit me so much because I've started to journal again, I've started to meditate, and I'll go in the sea in the mornings as a new habit that we've compounded. And now I'm a lot more like, I feel a lot more present. I'm a lot more peace with my thoughts. I recently downloaded an app which makes me do a 15 second breathing exercise before it lets me onto the app. Really? Yeah, which I've found is very, it's insane, actually. I probably spend like a, a one fifth of the time on Instagram than I did before I had the app. So this app basically l mitigates you going on Instagram via yeah. an exercise. Yeah. So it's like what it does is it basically stops me when I fucking go AFK IRL. I go AFK and uh, I'm like sat with my thoughts and I'm like, Whoa. and then I just fucking open up my Instagram, like just completely yeah. unconsciously open my Instagram. Like, you know, it stopped me from doing that, and it saves me so much fucking time and i've also made a conscious effort to not go on my phone until i've came out here and i've gotten like 15 minutes of sunlight straight away first thing in the morning sunlight straight into the eyes so i started <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck what's going on here so i started sleeping with my blinds open uh, again this is a habit which i stopped but i've restarted again yeah purely because the times i was waking up didn't align with like the sunrise anyway i sleep with the curtains open so i wake up naturally first thing i do is cold shower and then I go outside into the sun naked and they like, get some sun on my bollocks because that increases your testosterone. Nice. And on your balls. Yeah, and you need sunlight in your eyes. And how how is that with the neighbours, man? What well, this is where I'm moving on to. No. <laughs> oh okay. Oh okay. As long as I remember, like no one really like, lived or was occupied in the houses like beneath my like mini villa sort of thing. Right. So I'd walk out of the balcony every morning, go like this. Good morning, Kosamuri. You know like just putting like the vibes out there, pulling that forward motion into my day. You know what I mean? They go, did, you really? actually, did you actually do that? Yeah, I still, I still do it. <laughs> Wait, I do it with one hand now, one hand covering. <laughs> anyway, there was this old woman like filling someone up in the boot of a car, and she just looked up, obviously like startled by my exclamation. I was like, I was like, more in love. Went back and said, more in love. Yeah, so I always like have a quick. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how. I'd... 
do here with the with my balls out. I've got my neighbours over there, and then there's some neighbours there, and they have kids, young kids. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not too sure how that would go. Good morning, ghost of me. That's hilarious. I'm gonna start doing that. Do it, honestly. Good morning. In like a very like cheery, good morning. Guys. Yeah, boo. I'm telling you, <laughs> man, that, that gets you going for the day. It reminds me, actually, we mentioned Luke already on his Instagram stories. He used to do this. He didn't do this anymore. He started to do it again a little bit. But like he would always post good morning world on his Instagram story first thing in the morning. And I was like, that was actually very endearing. It's funny you should say that. Like, people actually watch your stories, you know. Like, this is something I've just only managed to, like, understand. Like, people watch your stories. Like, I get, like, over, like, a thousand views now on, your, on my story. Just because I'm wow. building my personal brand. I don't know. Maybe more. I don't, I don't really know. I don't really check. That's really good. Good. Well, how many followers do you have? 7K. That's a really good ratio. Is it? Yeah, that's a good ratio. And people swipe up, like, from pretty much every story. Whether it's, like, my book or, like, Good Morning. Or just me being a clampet. Which is every other story. <laughs> Head button punches. Yeah, that's that's another thing as well. With my new app on Instagram, I found that I'm far more selective with the stories I'm watching. So before I'd be like, yeah, story, story, story. And it's like, I half give a shit. I don't watch people's stories, bro. Yeah. No, I don't blame you. Because it's like... Unless I think I want it. No, I really will. I wonder if I'm... Yeah, like, oh, what does he mean? <laughs> no, I do, I, do like, I do like looking at people's uh, stories, see what's going on in their lives. But I'm much more selective with it. Like, usually, highest priority would be, like, my immediate people are around me, like, my friends and shit. Because I, I genuinely care what they're doing. Like, oh, cool story, man. Yeah, shit like that. Yeah, you, you want to see what people... But well, that's funny you should say that. I don't know if it's you. Probably the Instagram algorithm picks it up. But it's the people's stories I want to see are, like, usually up the front. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not consciously for that, but you're probably right. Well, it's, probably, it's probably super obvious. It probably is the algorithm, isn't it? But Yeah, but I've started just viewing people's stories as well. Especially if they're posting, like, hedonism on their stories. They're doing, like, the, the FOMO posts. Like, look how awesome my life is. Let me see what you think of this. I find that someone like Jordan Peterson, having a marriage with the same woman for, I think, over 30 or 40 years, is more impressive than having a new supermodel girlfriend on your arm every week. I uh, completely agree. You want a woman that completely resonates with you, fits into your frame. Which yeah. is massively important. Yeah. I've been with the like, girls in the past because they were stunning. Like, I'll give one example. I don't even give a fuck if she has this because she was a bikini model for the first like, week. Where it was going really well. Drop the game, drop the riz. She was loving the will I am slack. Anyways, it got to like, I made her my girlfriend. And then after like two weeks, I was just like, fuck me, what have I done? Like, she was like trying to like call the shots and stuff. I'll say, this girl does not fit into the frame of my life. She was exactly what you don't want. Trouble. Yeah. So I, I, I want peace. I fell for her because like she had a huge ass, amazing figure. I thought that we had similar interests because she had her own like, like makeup business and stuff. So I thought entrepreneurial, she's going to the gym. I mean, I, I like that. Mm. But then I kind of realized that I don't like that. <laughs> One bit. Oh, actually. You can be conceived by someone's beauty. And 100%. It definitely lies beneath that. And that's why I'm like super selective now like, when I do date girls. And I feel like when you when you find a good girl, you know it. Mm. If that makes sense. So you say you don't necessarily like that she's like busy entrepreneurial type. Why is that true? No, I like that. Like, a lot of people would disagree. A lot of people would say like a girl should literally work at like just be a housewife, which... I completely understand. I like that. And I think that is exactly what I will have. Mm -hmm. But I think when a girl is showing signs that she wants to work on herself, make something of her life, mm. I think that's incredibly attractive. That We're similar people. I want to become the best man I can be. She wants to become the best woman I can be. Mm. That she can be. So why wouldn't I want that? You know? And then, obviously, as a man, you, you obviously take over and, and she will fit in your frame if she's the right one. And yeah. I'm not saying she's going to stop her businesses, but it'll, it'll work accordingly within within your frame that you've set. Yeah. You say when I started like casually like saying like like a girl, let's say I like tell her straight up, I train and I work very very hard. These are the times and hours I can see you. I understand that might not resonate with your current schedule. I understand <laughs> you may not like that, but that's how it is. I have a take it or leave it, and that works. Again, you've got to have the abundance mindset because not all girls like that. Girls want to be like in your bed twenty four seven, which is very very bad. Yeah, yeah. Every time I've seen something like that, though, the relationship ends up horribly depolarized. They've not had sex for like six months. They low key hate each other, but like they're too committed, and it's like, well, yeah, we'll just settle. When you see each other at like a sad time, no, the opposite. 
Oh yeah. When you're in the bed with each other all the time. Yeah. Like, oh Netflix and like oh just be- like best friends. Dear that's like a nightmare. That's my idea of hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like a one way ticket to like depolarization. Like you have to have like healthy yeah. time apart and different things going on and. That's why I think it's equally important to have someone who has their things going on, especially like, like most men our age aren't necessarily are rich and mm. or have escaped the matrix, I'd say. Or not many men our age are living in Costa Marie with an online business training my type. With a Rolex. With a and, six pack. and a six pack. And six pack. One woman is more important than like a hundred holes, one hundred percent. If she compliments your life, if she helps you, then that's only the goal. It goes back back to the like ancestral days. Just like I talk about fasting, you know, fasting is good because when we were like cavemen, we didn't know when we were going to get our next meal. Mm. So we were we were ready. We were hunting for prey. We were ready to attack. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the same with like, of course, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I, I actually have no idea where you're going with that. I actually don't know where you're going. So you're, you're comparing fasting with women, having one woman. Because the idea of, you know, finding a mate, you want to find like a compatible mate, don't you? Yeah. And typically, you only really have one. Yeah. Anyone that companionship. And I think that's what I'll I see. Your, yeah, so I think maybe what you were getting at is like you check that off so you can then focus on other shit like getting fucking food. Yeah. Is that yeah. maybe that's what you were yeah, getting yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I often go on complete tangents and complete side missions with my analogies, you know. <laughs> and I just sit there and I'm like, Willie, what was I saying? <laughs> What's some of your strengths? And then. What are some of your weaknesses? I think my work ethic is definitely one of my strengths. I pride myself on being the hardest worker in the room. And I've kind of noticed that since I was young. I got my first job when I was 12. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, it's a crazy yeah. young age to start. When you said 15, I was like, wow. Yeah, so I was 12, I was scoring cricket. It was mind-boggling boring. And then I got a job when I was 13, stacking shelves in the corner shop. And this is where, like, probably my self-development journey started. Because I was still training, like, I was going to the gym. I was in the back. I'd do a sterling job. I'd do it really, really fast. Faster than all the other people working there. Make sure everything was perfect because I enjoyed getting praise off my boss. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then I'd go in the back and I'd start like doing like hammer curls with like crates of beer and like calf raises and like shoulder presses and stuff. Where does that come from? Right? Because when I was 13, I was not even a conscious being. I was just like, la di da di da. Do you have like a good strong father figure in your life? Yeah, my dad's a beast. So a little bit about my dad. He served in the army. So he's a grenadier guard. Hell yeah. My dad's been through crazy experiences. He's actually got one leg. So, wow. He was crushed by hydraulic rams. It broke pretty much every bone in his body. His arms, legs, spine, oh, neck, oh. hydraulic rams, all these big presses. How the fuck did that? She was in it, fixing it, and it got turned on. Only reason he they knew he was in it was because he was a bodybuilder at the time, and they heard his chest muscles popping. So he can't scream if he'd been crushed. Yeah. So he's in a wheelchair for about 15 years, approximately. They had me when he was in a wheelchair, and then about 2014, I think. He had his leg amputated, and now he can walk again. But my dad, I've always seen him as an alpha male. And when he was in the wheelchair, he had massive arms, just for like, like, I've always seen my dad as a hero, despite the disability. You know, he, he was in the army. He he did he did boxing, he was even fighting in school. That's one thing I wasn't. I would never fight in school, and I always used to think like, fuck, how was my dad like such a tough kid, and I'm not. Mm. And that kind of sparked me to want to become like the best man I can be. And then in later years, my dad had this accident, like quite young. So I think he was like 26. So he got everything took away from him at 26 in terms of like being able and stuff. If you got, if you got paralyzed and then he was in a wheelchair. So that was, that was a 26. Yeah. And it was only like last year I realized that if I want to make my dad proud, I've got to like literally live the best life I can be, become the best man I, I can, do the most exciting, thrilling things because there that's the stuff that he couldn't do and that he would have wanted to do because me and my dad are very alike. And I only looked, noticed this last year and now I'm, taking all the risks, taking all those opportunities. Because I know my dad would have. And I don't want to just live my life for myself. I want to live my life for my dad for the for those years that he got took away from him. Uh, there's a lot of power in that. Yeah. Do you, is, is he proud of what you're doing now? Oh, he's super proud. Yeah. Super proud. Do you talk to him often? Yeah. Well, yeah, my dad is like the rock of the family. Last year, my stepmom's grandma, stepmom's mum, shared dementia, so I cared, to her, cared for her at the very end. And then... My stepmom's dad died two weeks ago or last week. And now my, my dad's dad, my granddad, he's, he's also very, very ill. And so he's like bared all that weight on his shoulders. And he's got his own like pains, like physical pains to deal with. He's got like a family to look after. Mm. And he's got like six extended kids. You know what I mean? He's got like, he's literally, he's the man of the house. And it's like really, really, really nice to see. And it's it's nice to look up to someone who's like such such an alpha male bro. Like my dad, my dad's a G. 
Yeah. My dad is a G. That's that's so fucking important. And like that is what most Western households are lacking now. Big, strong man in the fucking yeah. household keeping shit together. Bro, like even though my dad was disabled, like growing up, I was scared shitless of the bloke. Like that's what I've struggled to like get across to articulate. Like, yes, my dad was disabled, but bro, when he was like hobbling to catch us running on the kitchen table, bro, I was shitting myself. I'm scared of my dad. Like it's the other week. Well, not the other week, it's like last year now. He was out with one of his Navy friends and my stepmom and Gordon's wife. And these two younger lads in the 20s, or like late 20s, early 30s, were like causing some rig, like knocked a drink out of my stepmom's hand. Mm. My dad just clocked this guy. The guy dropped. The other guy come running towards him. <laughs> feels <laughs> parallel. <laughs> no, he's, you know, he's walking. He's, he's got walking so, out so the big leg. Cool. And then I, I came in like, maybe it's like two days later, he like a cast on his wrist. So what you done, daddy fell out Sometimes he like, trips over. There he fell. Say like, no, no. Say like, what? Say like, I knocked two lads out. <laughs> I was like, I was like, what? When? Who? What? Where? When? But he told us a story. I was like, so that's how you broke your wrist? He said, like, yeah. And I was like, fuck me, dad. How much of your the, the decision making that you're making now do you think is down to like your dad and like the presence he's had in your house and your your life? I don't know. I, just, I know that he wants the best of me. Is is there much that you would di- differentiate from your dad? Like, is there some things your dad does that you would think like, I'm gonna go do this? Yeah, all the time, bro. Some of the stuff my dad says and does, I'm like, bro, you're an idiot. Like, I tell him that all the time. Yeah, you, you get that with the uh, generational difference yes. and like how quickly things have changed in the world. And my parents, it was like maybe a good idea to like buy a house, get a stable job, and it's completely different now. Trying to convince them. Of that is near enough impossible. Luckily, I've got my full support from my parents because when my dad was my age, he was away in the army, traveling Kenya, Canada, Northern Ireland. Mum was out my age, she was backpacking. So they've both traveled. However, they did want me to get the corporate job. They were buzzing with a job I had as a renewable energy developer and they really wanted me to pursue a career. But then I told them that it's not for me. And then since I had those two startup businesses, I achieved a lot in my young working career like mm. corporate and they knew I was hard working they had full faith in us like there's no objections they were like well if this is what you want to do then you've got my full support nice well, what would you say to young men who are listening to this who like are perhaps struggling to get their parents approval because I know that's a massive pain point for my audience a lot of them they're constantly fighting for their parents approval and they're not necessarily getting it you know well one bit of advice is just do it anyway and tell them after so you only get told off once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I learned when I was younger. Oh my God, yeah. I wish I'd took that advice. Yeah. When I was doing my video editing, it'd be weekly where I'd have my mom come out of room and start berating me and like, when are you going to get a real job? Well, just, just give them the ultimatum. Be like, look, I'm working on this. Give me 12 months. And if I don't do it, then I'll go back to, to, to living by your rules, living to your your accord. Really? Like, yeah, I made a mistake of like just talking about what I was going to do rather than just fucking doing it. Another issue I had, which is something I'd advise young men, is like your parents are maybe berating you. They don't have, you don't have their like uh, approval. You gotta look at like why that might be. Obviously, it's gonna be like a generational gap thing. But also, my mom would also at the same time with me building my online business, should see me like playing League of Legends until like 2 a.m. And it's like, well, yeah, mm-hmm. that's gonna. Like, of course, she's not going to have faith in me in building an online business when I'm also doing, like, all this stupid shit. So I'd say as well, if you're struggling for your parents' approval, manage your time wisely and be, like, an actual fucking rock as well, which yeah. doesn't seem like you've had much issue with because no. you've always been a super hardworking guy. My background has been more, like, I, I was a fucking idiot for so long, wasting so much time, so it's, like, very hard to get my parents' approval. You might not, you, you might just come to accept that you're never going to have your parents approval and you just got to do it anyway and eventually you get to the stage where we're at and it's like you know i'm my mom can't she can't say shit now yeah yeah exactly. <laughs> <Like it is. laughs> yeah one way that works not just for your parents but in any sort of argument this is how you win any argument i learned this just through studying psychology there's a good book it's not in this book but it's a good book anyway it's called never split the difference by chris foss it's a good book yeah you read it yeah amazing and Essentially, so if you want to like, win an argument, get someone over to your side of thinking. Then instead of saying, no, you're wrong, like to your parents, no, mum, I'm going to make loads of money video editing. You're wrong. I don't need a job. You know what I mean, that's going to dig their heels in the sand. That's going to make them defensive. Going to make their yeah, you're up. attacking their ego. Yeah. Because I know I know better. You're telling them wrong. No one likes to admit that they're wrong. Yeah. So you get them to admit that they're wrong by taking them on a journey. You say, yes, mum, I used to be the same as you. I thought video editing was a fantasy. I didn't think I could ever make money editing videos. Until I watched Sam's YouTube and I invested in his course. 
<laughs> and now, because of this, I now understand it's possible to make money. And this is what I'm doing to achieve that. So you, you see where I'm coming from now, though? Yeah. You see, instead of saying, no, you're wrong, you're making them defensive. You're taking them on their journey to understand why you believe what you believe. Yeah. And I think if you can do that with your parents. I think the main mechanism of that is also like, yeah, I, I too used to think like that as well. So you're like, oh yeah, like we're the same. We're in the same. Building common ground. That's it. That's the main mechanism of why that works. You're agreeing with it. Very smart. Yes, I used to agree with you. I used to think you could never make money video it. Yeah. But then I watched Sam's course. Look. Yeah. Have a look at this, mum. Now you see it's possible. Now you see what I'm doing. That's fun. Yeah. That's fun. Psychology, bro. Psychology. Yeah, and also, also just um, reading how to win friends and influence people. I uh, can't. I can't speak high enough for that. You read that, surely? Yeah, I've read that book. I I read it cover to cover constantly with a highlighter. Why, why do you yeah. Why do you read that book so highly? Because it's, it's probably not in my top five. If you're able to win people over and influence people, you're gonna get whatever you want in as well. I understand that concept, but I didn't think that maybe it's just the time in my life I read it. Atomic Habits was the book that changed my life. Really. Yeah, bro. I was doing some good shit. Yeah, I, never read, read. I was doing some good shit. Like, I was doing some good habits. So I was living a good life. And then when I learned about habit stacking and synaptic pruning, so synaptic pruning, essentially what that is, is, you know, if you're a piano player, huh? you strengthen the synaptic connections that help you play the piano. And if you don't lift weights, then obviously you'll delete those as the brain matures. Mm -hmm. So I learned that and I started implementing that. So I started practicing things and it's like a compound effect. The more you do things, the better you get at them. It's logic. Yeah. And then habit stacking is if you're doing a habit in the morning, so you wake up, first thing, stacking up a habit on top. Yeah, you go on the cold shower. Yes, you've been doing that for 60 days consistently. Well done. Now add a habit on top of that. Walk outside your balcony, start naked and say, good morning, Coast of Moon. It's easier to add a habit onto something that you're already doing. Yeah, I, I haven't studied atomic habits, but I understand the concept of habit stacking very well. And it's actually one of the main mechanisms we use to blow up Hamza's channel. We uploaded every single day without failure and the reason why we decided to do that is because people habit stack watching their youtube videos we would upload it at dinner time people sit down with their dinner they watch a youtube video interesting and they'll stack watching a specific youtuber if they show up for them every single day which was hamza hamza came with a very watchable applicable video to their lives every single day same time Every single time they sat down to eat their food, they had a Hamza video. Why would they watch anyone else? Because it's habit. It's a habit stuff. That's that is fantastic. Food and YouTube. That's fantastic. I've watched quite a lot of Hamza stuff now. I never like really heard of him, you know. Like despite how big he was, I'd never heard of him until like last year. Mm. Or if that like yeah, probably about last year. And then I was like, Oh shit, this guy's good. Like people saying, Oh, have you heard of Hamza? I'm like, no, not really. I just dismissed it. Even though I was on my self development journey, I just never came across him somehow. I was mm. one of the anomalies I haven't. Mm. Two million subscribers on YouTube. Yeah. One of those guys that didn't. Well, I think it appeals to like a slightly less mature audience. Yeah. With like the Jeffrey and Adonis stuff, which is still fucking valid, but obviously that's less fitting of you. Mm. Cause you're like, you're so fucking developed. You started so early. So you've got a very big advantage above a lot of people because a lot of guys like me. Yeah. I wasn't even yeah. alive until I was 22 years old. Bro, I was living in the shadows. <laughs> Bro, I was not a conscious being. <laughs> and I've spoke to a lot of guys who are exactly like that. I say that to them and they're like, oh, bro, that's so fucking relatable, actually. You're actually very, like, lucky. And you're, yeah. You've got a fucking great, great foundation to build off, man. And I think that you credit a lot to sounds like your dad. Yeah, my mum as well. My mum's amazing. And it's like the people I grew up watching, like Chris Williamson, bro, like, he changed my perspective. I rate Chris Williamson so highly. I watched him from the start. I really like Chris Williamson. When I went to like, visit my granddad, who was ill, you know, I'd, I'd go like super early in the morning and I'd just bash his podcast out. I'd do like three hour drives just constantly listen to him. That's great. And That's a habit stack. It was a habit stack rule. You drive in, you need a podcast. Chris Williamson shows up for you every time. Oh, Chris Williamson. Boom, habit stack. Weekly podcast as well. Exactly. It's, it's very powerful. And like, a lot of these content creators are using that as well. Makes you think, man. Make your thing. I can't wait to be 60 years old. Well, I can't. I can wait to be 60 years old. But when I, no. I see my grandfather, my mum's dad, and I call him Mr. Perfect Pants because everything he does is perfect. And I want to be like that. Everything I do, I want to execute perfectly. No. And when I'm looking at Hamza now, I see what he's doing like with the Adonis gang, Adonis school. I see like the message he's putting out. And I think that's absolutely crazy. Like That's the sort of audience. That's the sort of reach I want to be able to give. Mm. If I can help that many people, bro, yeah. that's going to be insane. It's like in the community at the moment, my high performance stuff. Like when people are posting their wins, I'm getting messages privately like thanking us for the work I'm doing and stuff. And bro, that motivates me so much. That's the best part, isn't it? That makes me like not only want to work harder on that, but want to work harder on myself to be the best 
I don't, I don't like to use the word role model, but I want to be that. Yeah, I want to be the best person that people can think, Will, like Will's absolutely smashing it. I want to be like Will. I want to be a guy who, like, without that horrible ego, I want to be the guy who's like genuine, authentic, like we were saying before, who still like has a bit of character about him, mm-hmm. still a bit daft. So who is your like, who's your like audience you want to be like reaching with your message? So essentially it's young entrepreneurs, it's, it's young entrepreneurs and, and guys on their self-development journey, probably about like 12 months, 24 months behind where I am. Right. Because so I feel... A couple steps back from you. Yeah, because I feel like that is so recent. You know, if you if you fall off your bike and get like a massive cut, that scar is with you. Say it's not a permanent scar, but it's with you for at least two years. That's it. So it's still fresh. You can still remember the accident. But when the scar's gone, you probably forget about it a little bit. And the things that happened to me two years ago, very, very fresh. I can re- remember everything vividly. So they're the type of people who I'm best equipped to help because the experience and lessons that I've learned are still fresh. Mm. You know, they're still tangible. I can still use them. Yeah, and, and you can you can actually relate. Yeah. That's some like a very big part. Cause it, like a lot of YouTube is like storytelling as well. So your ability to like story which I, I told you before we started this podcast, I actually ran you through my week. Well, yeah, yeah, it's sick. And on Mondays is the day I plan my videos. And I, I make such... My, my entire Monday is based around literally just revisiting my younger self who was like struggling with a bunch of shit taking myself through those motions those pain points the stories i had like and I, I you know what something else i do is i i put on my old playlist because music's so powerful so i put on my like my my playlist called toaster bath toast toaster bath toaster bath right why oh toaster bath yeah. oh bro that's <laughs> deep bro so wow. it's all of my it's a joke it's a joke it's like all of my sad music like my my it's little crazy my little peeps my juice worlds i'll listen to that the whole day and it's such a heavy day because it's like i live an awesome life now and i'm so happy and it's like it's not necessarily fun to revisit but it is fucking necessary because when i turn my camera on i'm able to put myself in those shoes so i'm able to speak effectively and that's a very conscious thing i have to do it's very mentally taxing so you feel like Mondays are the days that you, you know, put yourself in the hard position, let's say. You, Monday is my, in terms of my my schedule, is my, my least favorite day. Yeah. But at the same time, it's so fucking necessary and I wouldn't change. That's crazy that you go to that dark place so often. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I do that a lot, but like in a different sort of way. You, you do that on your Mondays by revisiting that, that place that you don't necessarily like going. And I do that by like doing equally as hard things in a different manner. Mm. So, for example, like, you know, the island of Koh Samui, it's a big hilly island. And I ran around the perimeter, you know, purposely because I, I, I did it on a Saturday and I decided to do it on, like, the Wednesday prior. I was like, yeah, I'm just going to do it. That is like, that's like a 56 kilometer run, right? 65 kilometers. 65. Yeah, because I did, like, the extra bits. Ah, uh, you're fucking nuts, yeah. bro. <laughs> and the re- I, I, want, I did that because I've been living such a good life in Thailand. I've not done anything necessarily super hard. I was like, I need to, I need to dance with some demons. I need to dance with the devil. I done it because I knew at one point in that road, I didn't know if it'd be 20k, 30k, 40k, 50k, 60k, where it'd get extremely hard. And I wanted to get to that point. So I did the run. The first 30 kilometers, I ran at a five minute, 45 kilometer pace, which is what most people do with 5k running. So I blasted it just to get fucked as fast as I could. <laughs> and then the last 30 kilometers was fucking brutal. Every single step I took, like my calves, my knees, my hamstrings, my quads, every, every component of my leg had its own sort of suffering and i just wanted to get a taxi so bad then i realized like oh this is why i'm doing the run because i wanted to get a taxi and mm. i did it because i wanted to get the point where i wanted to get the taxi yeah wasn't there a point this might because i've had a few friends who've done this run actually but wasn't there a point for your run where there was a hill and you were like oh i could just get a taxi or was that someone yeah. else that was you so i started at like Beauport. i ran all the way around the island got to the back to the south so the, the last probably about under 20 kilometers go i was like steep ass hills in the mai and it got to a point where I was like really struggling. Like my legs were fucked going up these hills. And I was thinking, I could just get a taxi. No one's going to know. Like people know that I do like loads of crazy Yeah, you can still post that on your Instagram. Yeah, like, yeah guys, did my run. Like, you know, I've done, I've done most of the run. So it's like, yeah. It's I, had, enough, I had that devil on my shoulder, that demon, like telling us to do that. And that's exact, that's the exact place I wanted to go to. You know, I wanted to go to that dark base, like pussy will. Young Will used to go to the change rooms crying after he got beat up at, at sparring. Young Will at school who wasn't very confident. That's like the place I wanted to take myself because I knew to know it's hard and that's essential for growth. Mm. Especially because I'm not fighting at the moment and I feel like fighting is the hardest thing in terms of like emotions you can do because it's just an absolute roller coaster. Mm. What was it like? Have you have you have you lost fights? Yeah, bro. I probably lost three fights in a row. Three fights in a row. Yeah. How was that? It was rough. 
take me take me through that help me understand because i've never had a fight really no nah. first fight when i lost it was a very very close fight well all the fights i lost were extremely close like i could have went either way and it's the fact that that's that's yeah. like difficult fair enough you get knocked out but if it's 50 50 fights and like it's like a split decision and you think you won other people think you won but the judges just didn't say it that way and it wasn't your night and if that happens that happened three times and most people would just hang the gloves up and think fuck that like i'm done but that motivated us even more that was like no i need i need to like correct this i need to win like significantly where there's no doubt about it where yeah. the judges can't say oh you just won like i want to fucking yeah, win you go one way or the other yeah like fuck this or fuck this yeah <laughs> you know to spell willie there you've got to use a couple l's to follow like. <laughs> and that's how i say it bro that's how i say it and I've, i always use the analogy of like a bone arrow here's me with another analogy you know like you got like this you pull it back so you've got to take a few steps forward about fucking flying forward yeah. and after those three losses that's when i done like the european tournament and then i won the belt and stuff and then kind of been uphill since then i can't wait to have my next fight until have you been knocked out before no but i've been rocked and sparring yeah yeah i was yeah. speaking about this today can you remember i was 16 i used to get punched all the time like when i was like 16 17 i was still light i was nowhere near as good as the other guys in the gym and i used to get hit like really heavy i used to see like black for like seconds and i never used to understand like what was going on and now i'm now, now i realize i was getting rocked like every single time I was getting I've hit. had that I've had that before I've been like rocked and like your vision just goes black and I and I came out of it and I was like I was pissed off I was straight away pissed off when I came out of it because like I was very new to sparring and I was sparring someone who was like 20 kg heavier than me way bigger and it's he's just wailing on me but straight away I was like because I'm pretty like you know mild mannered guy but like I kind of like bro can you fucking relax holy shit I was like straight away pissed off when I came out of that. Well, that happens. It's not fun. Like I said before, you yeah. learn you learn nothing when you just get battered twenty four seven. And I was like, very new. It's so unnecessary. Just like the person, the person doing the beating doesn't learn anything because it's, you can just do that on a punch bag. Yeah, yeah. And the person getting the beating doesn't learn anything because you don't learn anything when you just get fucking chinned. Yeah. What do you think it's good for? Is like character building. So what are your plans going forward? Well, plans going forward. World domination. World domination. Yeah. Are you staying in Koh Samui to do that, or are you going to be dying around? Or so I've got a few more like, goals, which I'll, I'll not say out loud. I like the, to be honest, I'm, I like the like, be open about goals because you're putting it in the universe. Right. You know, you, you're spreading that energy. Conor McGregor was big on that. Yeah. You've got you've got to speak it into existence. So there's a few like financial goals and business goals and like personal goals that I want to just achieve, like me on me kind of thing. And then once I've hit that sort of level, then I understand that there is zero limits now. Mm. and I think I should get there by end of May can I ask what those goals are or are they personal yeah personal goal well I'll tell you one I want to take uh, yeah I hope my mum probably won't watch this which I might but I want to take her skiing and I want to take her to Tokyo like, that's like, what, like one trip that's like, lovely yeah and then it's funny you said that me, me and some of my my friends here were talking about that we want to go to Japan for some skiing yeah cool man because I asked my mum I was like where do you want to go and she's like I'd love to go to Japan so okay and I've not, not mentioned anything since and like that's like one of the goals that really really motivates us I want to be able to take her there and like, give her like the best holiday possible Either make that's what it's about bro yeah that is what it's about it's how you should spend your fucking money and like why why we do this you know I'm, I'm able to have my, my fucking girlfriend here and look after her and give her such an awesome life because of the work I've been doing in the last few years and that is just yeah glorious that feeling. feeling is fucking beautiful. So giving back to your, your loved ones, giving them an awesome life, and especially people who have brought you to where you are now. Yeah, like, we're eternally thankful for our parents because even if you, like, don't say eye to eye with them, they brought you into this world. So without them, you are nothing. Yeah. And you're alive because of them, because let's face it, until, like, you're a teenager, I know there's some exceptions and circumstances in the world that ultimately you can't do shit without your parents. Yeah. They are. Even if you have the worst upbringing, you're still alive because in some way or another, they have cared for you. They have, like, brought you on this earth and they have, like, gave you food and stuff. So you are where you are because of them. And luckily, I'm in a really fortunate circumstance. I've got amazing parents and I want to, like, truly, like, give back to them. Fuck yeah, bro. That is awesome. I think that's that's motivation as well. Like, loads of people can use that motivation to go out there and, and, and do the thing. A lot, a lot of guys, I think they, they're so caught up in how they feel and the struggles that they're going through. And it makes sense because if you're at a low point, you want to be quite selfish with your energy because you're conserving it for yourself. Well, I found that even like days now where I'm having a bad day, I will try to go out of my way 
literally I consciously do this because sub, like subconsciously I don't want to do it because I'm like I want to be just selfish with my energy but I'll go out of my way consciously to like help someone with something but proven them and, and I'll give them some advice or I'll um, go out of my way I'll do I'll make something for them anything and that makes me feel better this is a proven fact and I used to do it on the way to sixth form this is like a, when I started my self-development journey like properly and I read if you do a random act of kindness every single day then it makes you have like a much better day and you feel way more fulfilled obviously there's no such thing as a selfless act because let's face it everything you do that you think selfless you're doing it because you feel good about it yeah but i'd be walking a sixth form and if i say like the wind blew someone's bin over i'd pick it up or like straight in a garden gnome just anything as insignificant as it is oh yeah like and you're doing like a good thing for someone else yeah and you're not you're not even getting the instant feedback from doing something like that because you don't have someone there saying thanks will you're just doing it for yourself literally and the 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 world is the universe is watching it's good karma as well bro it's like people who are watching this i don't know how old they will be but if their guy's still in school still in sex form do that like adopt that habit on the way to school like do something you know help someone cross the road or pick, pick the bin up or something and if you're in a workplace what i did i'd walk into the to work high on life because i'd done a cold bath i went to the gym went to the sauna I'd already done so many things in my morning. I know Alex from Moses is against this, but anyways, <laughs> I'd get to work and I'd be in an amazing mood. And I'd just like, say, good morning, everyone. Can I get anyone a coffee? You know, just put yourself out there and then say it, say it to one of the girls, like, have you done something different with your makeup today? And then she'd say, no, why? I'll say, oh, she eyes look amazing. Small things, man. Like, she knows, she knows like, I'm like, taking the piss. Yeah. She knows like, I'm not hitting on her, <laughs> but I'm saying it in such a way that it still makes her feel good. Yeah. I've, I used to say it to the lads as well. I was like, bro, you've been working out. Yeah, you know what I mean, the polo's looking tight on you now. Yeah, you no, know, it's just the things like that. You're making fe- fe- people feel good. You bring in the energy, just like we said before. You either radiate or absorb energy, and you want to be that person that walks in the room, lights it up, radiates that energy. Oh yeah, man, it's it's small little micro things like that on a day to day basis, which is gonna get you there as well. That's fucking awesome. I feel like we could talk for fucking longer, but it's getting on. It's fucking 10 p.m. So I think we're gonna call it here. But well, it's an absolute fucking banging conversation yeah it's been good bro it's been good yeah and i wish you all the luck in the world not that you need it for your future fucking endeavors and uh getting your mom out to that skiing trip yes I, that's gonna be fucking awesome and we're gonna be when we share the journey together bro when you're not coming to talk you'll be mum though <laughs> <laughs> uh thanks for watching boys um well if you if you got anything to plug like what 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 are your socials um instagram is will courtney with three y's YouTube's the same, I believe. Yeah, just drop us a message if you want to connect. If you've got any questions about anything, then feel free. Awesome, man. Well, boys, thank you for listening. And uh, I'll be seeing you more frequently with more Cigar Sundays.